Hello, YouTube. So that you understand the complexity of the Dyatlov past tragedy and the secrecy surrounding it, let me tell you today about other fateful expeditions to the Ural Mountains. You can find plenty of information about the Urals in general, as panoramal phenomena, in my numerous videos about the Chud, the subterranean civilizations, about UFOs and aliens pertinent to that area, about the Dyatlov Pass mystery, and so much more. Just look in my channel. Now, in the 19th century, the Urals were actively studied and investigated by geological expeditions. They discovered more and more of the riches of the natural resources of the land. Now it's hard even to imagine what was it like for researchers at that time. They could live in the taiga boreal forest for months, moving off-road. There were no good maps and no high-quality equipment back then, of course. Expeditions in the northern part of the Urals were especially difficult. Sometimes the participants of the expeditions had to literally fight for their lives. However, despite all the difficulties and hardships, the researchers, scientists, geologists, others, went to the Taiga and the Ural Mountains again and again. When you get acquainted with old printed publications, you often come across interesting forgotten information about those days. Well, let's talk about the topic of missing expeditions. And as illustrations, um, I will use some of the photographs from Mikhail Alexeyevich Pavlov and other geological expeditions to the Urals in the early 1910s and other related periods. Fortunately, Pavlov's expedition did not disappear, but look at the pictures because they convey the atmosphere of such expeditions in the area very well. In his article in the 1910s, the founder of the Ural Society of Natural Science followers, Claire, mentioned the mysterious disappearance of one of the expeditions in the Urals. Here's what he said. In the first half of the last century, packed expeditions from the Bogoslovsky Zavod were repeatedly sent to the northwest to the mountains to find gold and new ore deposits. Uh, of one of them consisting of 50 men, mine foremen and workers with tools and provisions. Well, none of these people returned and the search for them by new expeditions did not find either the place or the cause of their death. This was passed on to me in my old age by mining engineer Burnashev, who in 1844 led a large expedition from Bogoslovsk to the Pechora River having, among other things, a verbal order to find traces of the lost expedition if possible. But he found nothing. He assumes that those people died during a massive forest fire. Since then, especially on the western slope, the banks of many of the mountain rivers floating in the spring have now lost their forest cover, but on the ridge itself and on the peaks, Climatic conditions have only changed because snow melts faster in the bare spaces and rains drain faster than under the forest, causing floods and even floods in the underlying coastal area. This is from Clears about the creation of a high-altitude meteorological station in the Urals, dated 1922. Uh, Bogoslovsky Zavod refers to the Ural factory, government-owned, copper smelting, iron smelting, and iron making. Its construction began in 1758. Fifty people disappeared without a trace. There is another publication about the tragically ended smaller expedition to the, in the Ural Commercial and Industrial um, Address Calendar for 1900. Forest management works in the state forest of the Cherdinsky district are delayed by extremely difficult conditions as a result of the desolation in this area. About 20 years ago, an entire timber cruising team was killed here, sent to the Ural Forest, and only after a long time, geodetic instruments and human bones were found in the forest. Recently, 
one of the timber, timber cruisers died, another went crazy, and the third had to be taken away to prevent a similar end. This area is completely uninhabited, so it is difficult to find guides and workers even for a good fee. Now, for those that know, don't know, timber cruising involves collecting information like tree measurements on specific plots of the forest. Now I want to give you some comments from the Russians who read information about the expedition's disappearance in various online publications. Here's the first one. There's a high probability of mass infection with trachinellosis of the entire group after eating bear meat. Um, in geology, in Soviet times, there were cases when, entire, when the entire geological party fell ill after eating bear's meat. Although people there were always experienced, maybe they hoped for the Russian voice, meaning this might not happen, maybe. 50 people is not so much for a party uh, if the food is coming from a common pot. Next, the Urals is an ancient storehouse of minerals, many of which are precious, very precious. They always attracted dashing people. I, mean, I think here is more violent people. It's not, it is not for nothing that a lot of riots began there. Most likely, even now, there are gangs for illegal mining of something. They are probably closely connected with the local population, and more often, they are themselves locals. And people don't want to share this with strangers at all. There was a movie once called The Missing Expedition. Uh, there's a, a very pl plausible account of events. Alas, man is the most terrible and ruthless creature on the planet. Next comment. In Tsarist times, under the rule of the Russian Tsars or kings, there were roads along which local Cossacks maintained communication between the center of the empire and Kamchatka. I learned about this from the memoirs of a revolutionary who fled to Kamchatka using them. Only experienced people could live in the taiga. The missing expeditions were not exotic because there was the proverb, your prosec prosecutor is the bear. Um, and the criminal element was off the scale. You also need to be careful with fish. It is often full of worms. Next, they haven't disappeared anywhere. They found a lot of gold, then one part of them shot the other part and went to Arhangelsk, where they boarded a steamer with the gold and went to England, then America, with new documents. Next, in the early 1980s, um, I was in an, in an expedition to the circumpolar Urals near Mount Sabre. Uh, the group had only four people. The tent stood near the river. Somehow we crossed to the other side and found a strange camp site about 200 meters from us. Someone lived in it for a couple of days. They didn't have a tent. Uh, they um, didn't come up to us. They were just two of them. Later, we had a conversation um, at the station with one of the prison officers there. And he explained to us that it was one of the settlers. We were surprised, like, why didn't you come to us? We would have fed them, and we did not suffer from lack of food. And he told us, yes, they wanted to take everything, not part of it. We've had this case before, and these people realized that there were four of you, and you were all armed, so they didn't take the risk. Next, 60 people can be written off as a bear's attack, but it's difficult. As practice has shown, eight people of the group of exploration geologists are gutted by the bear at once, but at least traces of the group remain there. Eat the innards and leaves, eats the innards and leaves, the bodies remain. Maybe these people got to the old believers somewhere, of whom there were plenty in Siberia, like convicts. Um, the old believers is refers to religious dissidents. Uh, it's uh, in the Russian Eastern Orthodox Church. Uh, it started in the times of Peter the Great, and I mentioned them in my other videos. Next, it could have been, don't forget, you wrote it yourself, that the expedition was looking for gold. They could have stumbled 
upon a secret to develop mine with ensuing consequences. Accordingly, the owners of the mine could take care of themselves for money. Of course, they also took everything so that the expedition would disappear without leaving even a trace on paper. Moreover, many expeditions were private, or as we now say, wild ones. And you can only find mentions of it in the archives of the Gendarmerie Corps Police. If such have been preserved, the gendarmes tracked everyone, especially strangers, but did not interfere without a command. They had their own job, and the police had to look for people. Although there, is, there was one ministry, the two departments were um, different. This is referring to historical Russian imperial um, law enforcement agencies. There was the gendarmerie and the police. It doesn't matter to us right now. Next, there is still one factor, the local aborigines. I heard that one of the expeditions to explore the Ivdiel Ob Highway was shut down, meaning executed by the locals. Only the son of the head of the expedition was left alive. He went fishing at that time. I lived in those parts for a while. Everyone was talking about it there. Next, there may be a connection between the missing expedition of 50 people and the events that unfolded in two cases known to me along the Alhovka River in the Vyshersk Reserve in the 1950s. And in the same years, in the same mountain range, in the manifestation of a woman who came into contact with people from the expedition. In the first case, she was simply observed nearby. In the second, in the gathering dusk, she helped return to the base, pointing the way with an ancient lamp in the north of the Perm and Sverdlovsk regions. That's the Dyatlov Pass area, by the way. The clothes she wore, she was wearing in the dis- were in the descriptions of the late 19th and early 20th century. They were characteristic of the area. Maybe everything connects. Next. Remember the violent 1990s. It, it's, like, it's not like in the Taiga. They disappeared without a trace in the city. I heard the story. Nine people disappeared in the Taiga. These people are hunted by rummaging uh, to illegal gold mines and robbed illicit prospectors. Well, apparently they came across more serious people later and disappeared into the taiga. No one has ever found out where their bones are. Or the case in our city at the beginning of the 2000s, the entire ferry crew disappeared. They also did not find, did not find them. According to rumors, they refused to pay tribute to criminals, as the wife of one of the missing said. Someone drove behind him and his friend in a jeep. They sat down and things did not work out. And they're still missing. Next. Under the guise of search groups, the people combed the taiga in search of the golden woman. It was like torture for the aborigines and the inquisitive outsiders were fed to ants and various animals. Next, and in history, probably not for treason to the motherland and not for the creation of an alleged Masonic lodge, as the accusation states. The OGPU and KVD, KGB, Special Department Boki Barchenko, who dealt with such phenomena, was shot dead, executed. Naturally, the legend and the scenery of the incident will be focused on the level of local tourism instructors. And one has to guess about the real information by the very indirect signs. So, in the comments, we're learning that the disappearance of these expeditions could have been connected to paranormal phenomena such as the Golden Woman. Please see my videos on the subject. You will not, put a, you will not be able to how can I say, not listen to them. I think you'll find out something very interesting that you've never heard before. Also, so what other reasons could it be? Uh, some unknown but classified taiga paranormal phenomenon, a strange taiga female that lures expeditions to their demise, revenge of the indigenous people against the Russians who violated their sacred places, 
escaped from Russia with the stolen gold by that very expedition that disappeared. And it could be local criminals who dealt with them. I will not even go into the comments that blame the cryptids like the Mank for the disappearance for the expeditions. No one knows for sure, knows for sure what had happened there, or those who know have not relieved, have not revealed anything and did not relieve our curiosity. So that's what I wanted to let you know today. Please look at my other URL videos. I think this is a land of amazement, of riches, of incredible paranormal phenomena. And I keep bringing this information more and more. And I will continue to the extent that I can. If you like my research, please support it through the links you'll find in the description uh, to this video. Please tell others about my channel. Please like my videos and thank you for your attention to my work.